Welcome back to the channel and to day three of the Cumbria Way. I'm starting off today with the old dungeon girl behind me and today we're going to head down and work our way towards probably the biggest town on the way apart from where we start in Allswater. So we're going over to Keswick. On the way there we're going to go over the Stake Pass. That's our first big job for today. So we'll head down here for quite a bit and then we'll do the up. Right, let's look at today on the map. Making our way down Mickledon Valley towards Stake Pass. This is a low level valley walk. It's a nice easy section for the start of the day. It gets us ready for the 300 metre climb. The ascent is a good path, but it is steep and gives us our only significant up of the day. And we soon head down the other side, taking in the impressive waterfalls on our way. Working across the valley floor, we pass Sergeant's Crag and Eagle Crag and there's time to take in the impressive surroundings. Turning left, we follow the river downstream, passing Stonethwaite on our left. Eventually, we make our way to the village of Rostwaite. We're there, there's time to stop for something to eat. Meeting the River Derwent further up, we pass under Castle Crag. This is the smallest of all Wainwrights. We then skirt the edge of Grange, before making our way to the Manistee Estate and the shores of Derwent Water. From here, it's a steady walk along the waterside, taking in a few local points of interest on the way. You can admire the activities on the water. Eventually, we'll leave Don't Water and take a walk through the woods near to Cat Bells. As we head around the top of the lake, we come out of the woods in Portinscale, and then it's a final walk into Keswick, which is an easy finish for the day. I hope you enjoy the route, and now let's have a look at day three. I'm on a valley walk here for quite a long time, and we're going to go it's kind of adjacent to the band, which I've seen on another video, I'll put in the link for you. Alison's not with me today, she's got the bus round to Keswick. It's about eight o'clock in the morning, so I'll meet around there later on. We'd always plan to do that. It is a bit windy today, so let's try and keep that off the mic. But once we've gone over the top of Stake Pass, we should be okay. When we get to Rosthwaite, hoping to pick up a bit of lunch there, because I just headed out before breakfast. And there's not that much on this route, but there is Rosthwaite. Grange is there as well. And then we'll be in Keswick. So we're not out in the wilderness like we will be on some days. Right, let's head down here then. This is the walk down. We've got the band on this side. Bowfells in the background there. Uh, a bit clouded in today. So we're going to walk around here and then when we get to the little split there is a path you can go up that way and you'll see that on the vocal video uh, but we're going to go over this way at the Stake Pass. It's a new gate. Oh. I've noticed on this there's uh, Quite a few new gates have been through and I went through somewhere yesterday when there was a National Trust guy repairing it so I wonder whether they've had a big overhaul job and gone through and fixed some stuff. Here's an older one then and some early morning sheep. Hello. As we go down the valley here we're going to be going this way up Stake Pass. Uh, and this you got directly ahead is Rosset Pike. It's the midpoint now on day three. And uh, just thought I'd give you an update on how I'm doing. Uh, well, I still got the blisters from day one, but I found some really good jelly pads to put on the side of my um, ankles. So that's fine, pretty good. And my Achilles on my right foot is pulling a little bit and trying to tell me something but I think we're okay just need to stretch it out a bit and keep an eye on it apart from that muscle wise it's all pretty good <laughs> did a good old bath yesterday and a soak and uh, yeah I feel pretty good today we're going to get to the end of this valley soon and then it's a 300 meter climb as we go up State Pass so quite significant stop a couple of times on the way <laughs> just to get a breather but yeah, just wanted to kind of get moving today and get on with the route really. 
I'll pass a few things that I've done previously. So we're going to go through Rostroit. We'll go past Castle Crag, which is the smallest of all the Wainwrights. I've got a video on that, I'll put it in if you want to see it. But yeah, it should be an interesting day today. Still a fair bit of water around from the other day. This is Mickledon back at the side of me here. And that is following us all the way down here. Or well, we're following it. <laughs> this stretch is called Mickledon uh, and it's a bit of a bit of a flat one. It's a bit watery today. I feel like it's a bit of a stream, but we'll see me at the end. Then we can start heading up. Looking forward to seeing the valley view on the other side actually. Uh, because although I've been up this way before. I've never kind of carried down to Rostweight. It's up towards Esk Pike up there. And a little bit of the cloud. The pass we're going up's not covered just yet, so it might be all right for a view from the top. Only one real climb today, and this is it we're coming to now. It is getting pretty blowy here. Uh, <laughs> it's just died down a little, so I'm turning the recording. But yeah, pretty blowy at the top, and I'm always a little bit cautious of that. Here's the bridge, and we are going to go down to the split point and then head our way up there. Little sheep fold there. A couple of sheep thinking of getting in and using it. There's the sign then. So we're looking for to S cows is that way. And it's just up there. And near the tarn and steak pass is for us. Up we go. Oh, wind's getting up. You can probably see the ferns there blowing about. The climb's about 300 meters, and I'm kind of looking forward to getting it up and over because it is a bit blowy. It was forecast that today. Again, if you want to check the forecast before you go anywhere, uh, I wouldn't use things like BBC because they'll tell you what it is in like Ambleside or Kendall or whatever. But if you use mountain forecast, you can actually put the mountain in you go into. And it gives you things like the cloud base level so you've got an idea before you go if you're actually going to see anything so that is well worth it it gives you wind speeds in there at the tops and also just general conditions of the day but we go then stake pass pretty firm path to start off with it's just there behind me It is a noticeable climb this as you go up it, <laughs> about 300 metres, but you are treated by the valley view on the way back. So looking down there, that's our accompanying view, so we can't really complain about that. Wow. So just around the corner there is where Dungeon Gill is. The old Dungeon Gill and the new Dungeon Gill. If you've stayed in either of those, or visited the Dungeon Gills, tell them which one you prefer, if you've been in them both. That'll cause a bit of controversy. <laughs> I know which one I prefer. <laughs> Early morning sheep there, all right mate. All right, we're getting up there. View down is still looking splendid. This at the side here, uh, unsurprisingly, is Stake Gill because <laughs> we're going up the Stake Pass. Mm -hmm. 
got a bit hectic there for a minute <laughs> with the rain what we call heavy rain which was forecast uh, so at the top here it does flatten out a bit so we'll come up this way just crossed over State Gill and we are heading up here and shortly be able to see Rosthwaite and the Borrowdale Valley New sheepy here. This is the top, it's very bobbly. <laughs> Lots of mounds going on there. So we're heading straight forward, then we'll start to head into the valley. Turn marker to show us the way. The top is pretty much winding as you go through here. Uh, so that's us going back, so wiggling our way around there. Just walking down here on this side, you've got high rays and all scarf. Did those, uh, those two a couple of years ago. I did camp on Eagle Crag last summer, a bit of wild camping. So if you do some wild camping, let me know what your favorite spot is in the lakes. If you do it in the lakes or wherever you do it. Uh, that was my first wild camp. I don't do that much, but I do enjoy it when I get out. I've not come camping on this particular trip because uh, I need to dry all the stuff off, charge all the batteries so I can film the next day and do all that stuff for you. Uh, but yeah, tonight I am staying in a pub, no surprise there, in Keswick. So I'm looking forward to that. Right now then, at this stage, we have then reached this. So that is our valley shot on the way down. Fantastic. So we're going to head all the way down the valley and then soon we'll get to Rosthwaite. It's about 10 o'clock in the morning now, so I think Alison will be checking out that hotel. <laughs> I hope you had a nice light in. One of the things about the lakes is it rains quite a lot. <laughs> and that's all right, because rain turns into this at the side. Look at that, it's fantastic. Right, so that goes down into the river and we follow that all the way down. Trying not to film on the way down, but that I couldn't help it. That's great. This is Stake Beck as we go over it again. There we go, look at that. I was talking to a guy yesterday when I was at the Wainwright pub, and he was saying, Oh, the winds are going to get up like today. Uh, I hadn't really looked at that, but <laughs> it is, it's really windy. <laughs> So I am glad I'm off the top. I kind of wanted to go up and down quite quickly before it started getting a bit crazy with the wind. So valley walk for us now in the safety and we are heading past uh, Eagle Crag in a bit. Still a bit watery. This valley floor is pretty long. Uh, working our way down though, and we're gonna get to Stonethwaite first. And there's a pub there if you want to get some refreshments. But I'm going to push on to Rosthwaite, despite having no breakfast. So I want something in the, in the shop, a little farm shop there I quite like. So I'm going to pop in and see what they've got today. As I'm walking down here, you've got Sergeant's Crag on this side. Then Eagle Crag up there. As I come through this valley, it's quite bouldery. There's a big boulder up there. I'll bet someone's give it a name. I don't know what it's called though, so if you do, pop it in the comments. But we are working our way down here, and it did say, actually, that today would start off a bit, you know, rainy, 
and it'll get better. So I'm looking forward to a nice afternoon. Seems to have dropped off with the rain a bit. Not saying I'm not going to get wet, but <laughs> I don't mind as long as it gradually improves. So it's about 11 o'clock now. Just stopped raining at two. I reckon I am in Rostwaite for 12 o'clock. So we'll find out, that's my target. It's pretty quiet. I've not seen that many people today. I saw three guys earlier on, on the tops, just past the DV group, but that is all I've seen today. So it's been a bit of a quiet one. Uh, you know, the weather's not exactly ideal, so that puts quite a lot of people off. But you know, if you're in a quiet time, <laughs> that's all right. Just balancing on this rock. All right, I better stop talking because I'm in a bit of a precarious position. So we're going to head down the valley there and then we'll see Stonethwaite at the campsite on this side and then we'll get down to Rothwaite. There's Eagle Crag up there, looming above us. We'll come across the campsite soon and then from there we'll just work our way along to Rothwaite. Uh, Stonethwaite's on the other side of the river where the campsite is. Whoop, get under this tree. <laughs> Quite a few boulders knocking around here. Um, we're in the area which is fairly close to the Bowder Stone. So if you're not seeing that, I did a little video, uh, I'll put it in the link, but it's called Jaws of Borrowdale. <laughs> and the Bowder Stone's in there, which is a 2,000 ton uh, boulder with a ladder up the side so you can go up it. If you want a mini summit for the day, that's a good one to get up. So a bit of fun in the area. We're entering the area soon, which is Wainwright's favourite square mile in the Lake District. And it's got the Bowderstone in there, it's got Castle Crag in there. Uh, and it's got Rostwaite and Grange in there. So, lovely little area. If you're just in nearby Keswick, then pop over, give it a look. If you've been round there, then just let me know. And let me know what you thought of it. If you're going to go to Stonethwaite, you can just go over there. But we are not doing that. We're going to keep on this side of the river and work our way down to Rostwaite. Just heading over this now. This is Greenup Gill and it's just working its way down towards Stonethwaite back, which is just there. We're going to join that in a sec. <laughs> the rain started up again, but it is hopefully going to be a dry afternoon. So we'll look forward to that if it happens. <laughs> Just give you a look back here. So that is Eagle Crag. And although it's not the highest, it is really imposing in the landscape. And that's why it's a bit of a target for a lot of Wainwright baggers, including myself. So just heading past this interesting little area. If you like crossing streams, I definitely recommend this walk because <laughs> it seems like there's one every five minutes. So there's Stonethwaite in the distance. We're going to stay on this side of the river and then we'll veer over that way to get towards Rothwaite. I feel like it's drying out a bit now. <laughs> that's possibly the end of the rain, but it's a bit earlier than it tipped on me. <laughs> so we'll see how we go. But the afternoon from two is due to be dry, so hopefully it'll just ease off now. This path on the way to the village, it's really pebbly. <laughs> so we've just been walking on pebbles for a couple of miles now. But you know, nearly there. And there are worse hardships in life than that. I really want to stop at this shop and get some food. Uh, I've got stuff in the bag, but it's like snacks. I don't want to eat it though. I want to wait, so I'm being a bit stubborn with myself. I'm going to wait till I get there. So I reckon another 15, 20 minutes and we'll be there. I'm guessing that is dinner time. One of them's got pretty big horns though, so <laughs> I'll just walk past. So up there you've got Maiden Moor and High Spy. Maiden Moor High Spy. And further down you have Cat Bells. Maiden Moor and High Spy and Cat Bells are on the Newlands Watershed. 
So I've got a couple of videos on those. If you want to see those, I'll put the links in. And again, walking towards Castle Crag. And I've got that in a couple of videos. That's the smallest of all the Wainwrights. Still working our way along. We've got Grange Fell over this side as we come into the village. I did a Grange Fell walk and then up Castle Crag, so it's a shorter one. And then just a little poof around the jaws of Borrowdale, which includes Castle Crag. So if you want to see some shorter videos than this, uh, you can do like quite quickly. I've got a family section, and they're quite short ones, which are good to do in an afternoon. Uh, but I do put them all in folders. So on the Castle Crag side, that's going to be in the Northwest Fells. Grange is in the central fells. So put them all in folders. So if you're around the lakes, or thinking of going around the lakes, and you want to look in a particular area and walk there, just go on the main site and you can have a look at those folders. All right, let's get ourselves to Bostelate. Here we are then, there's the bridge. Wow, the wind is getting up get over the bridge here. Uh, Castle Crag is just there. So that is the smallest Wainwright of all here in the uh, Borrowdale Valley. Right, there's uh, not much of a path here, so just gonna be a bit careful. Across the road here. So up here is Yew Tree Farm. Nice little place for food. <laughs> Inquisitive little lamb. Quite a few in the field there. All right, mate. What are you having? All grass, lovely. There we go. Lock in. Now, last time I came down here, there's some pigs in there. Where have they gone? I kind of feel like I've just had them for breakfast. <laughs> the cafe is just behind me here, a little bit down the alley. And here, you've got the Rostweight stepping stones to get you a better shot than that. Uh, last time I came here, it was probably autumn and it had been really, really wet. And they're completely submerged, but well, <laughs> Not totally unsubmerged today, but yeah, you can, on a lighter day, get across there. And this is a fantastic bridge going across, and it'll take you to the foot of Castle Crag. There you go, there's the River Derwent. We're gonna go down here and through that gate, then we'll follow the River Derwent for a little bit. They always have a bit of bother going over this. There was a piece of pipe you could use, but well, it's further down the stream there now. Anyway, by this stage of the walk, we're no strangers to crossing streams. <laughs> and it's done. The next bit, we're just going to follow the River Derwent all the way along to Derwent Water. Then we walk around the edge, and then we find ourselves in Keswick. First though, we'll pass Castle Crag. So there it is just above us. If you do want to go up Castle Crag, then you just take that path. That takes you right to the top. There's another one in the woods here as well. I'm not suggesting you add it into this walk while you're doing it, because <laughs> it's is long enough as it is. <laughs> just thinking about day three, because I think the rest of this pretty much I've already walked previously on different walks. So day three, the uh, long walk to start off with along the valley, good views. Then you come up Stake Pass, across the top. That feels quite isolated and it's beautiful with the waterfalls there on the way down. And then you end up in civilization. The sun's coming out a bit now. Now that we're in the woods, we're fairly close to the Millican Dalton Cave, 
So I've got another video with the jaws of Borrowdale and that explains about the caves. It's basically somewhere that Millican Dotton lived for a number of years. He's a survivalist, gave hiking tours and climbing tours from there but he lived in the cave and it's uh, just a cave. <laughs> it really is a bit of a rough sleeping situation. So he's a bit of a character in the area and during the war he was having a fire up in his cave and an air aid warden came up to him and told him to put it out uh, and he went mad because it was infringing on his civil rights so he wrote off to Winston Churchill to complain and I think fair enough he's nowhere near population really he's going to keep Rostwaite and Grange safe because if they're focusing on his fire they're only going to bomb him because there's nobody there I mean who lives in a cliffside <laughs> Some evidence of the slate mining down here. If you go up to Castle Crag at the top, there's quite a big pile of spoil there. So yeah, the heritage of this place is pretty visible. If you're coming through this way, then that other pile of spoil there, there's a path going off and the Millican Dalton Cave is just up here. But that's for another day. We are going up here on our way to Grange down there in a sec but the river is quite still today a couple of paddle borders out enjoying it coming down now it's a couple of bridges to cross then it's a pretty flat walk across to Grange there's our first bridge our second just up there we've got a couple of guys paddle boarding upstream it's quite a slow running today the river so should be alright for them just a third of a mile down to Grange which is just down there we're actually gonna go over the top of the village so we're gonna head upwards this takes up a bit then, so we go into Hollow's Cottage, which is just ahead of us there. Then we're going to go round, and we end up at the Borrowdale Gates Hotel. Just getting around the edge of the farm here. So just looking back, this grange fell up there, and the Bowder Stone is actually at road level, probably about there. Heading off the path, so we've come past Castle Crag there. So I've headed down the water's edge here, let's our way up, and now going back onto the fell. Looks like the lock's been shattered off that one. This is the path down, pretty straightforward to follow. Great views ahead. There's the hotel then. Work our way through these ferns again. So it's a little bit at the side of the village, main village is there. Here we are, Borrowdale Gates Hotel. Well, so through our <laughs> slightly damp gate to there. Oh, it's a posh one. Four stars. So a little bit of a road walk just for, I don't know, half a K or something. And then we're gonna turn off right to the Manistee Estate, which is kind of where I was the other week when I was at Cat Bells. It's right on the shoreline of Derwent Water. And the jetties are there as well. So fancy a little hop around the lake on a boat, you can do. Right, so just turned off through this gate here. But Cat Bells is just up the top there. And we came down the side of it the other day uh, to about there, past the plantation, to the ice cream van and then down to the shores, so not far. Someone was commenting on that video saying, so, you know, shame you didn't have a better day for it, which, you know, it's not always fantastic days. And I think <laughs> the rain does put quite a few people off, but really it shouldn't. Uh, when they say light showers in the weather forecast, it means this, there's a little bit of rain. Uh, if you are sort of new to hiking, 
what I'd say is just don't wear cotton because um, I'm wearing like a synthetic top and this jacket and synth the trousers again very light and I've been wet and dry about five times today <laughs> just because they're really light materials but if you wear cotton it's got a sort of tendency to grab onto the moisture and keep hold of it so if I wore that and it was on the tops and it was windy and I got the wind chill I quickly find myself in trouble so yeah what I'd say is avoid cotton especially denim things like that and synthetics are good merino wool's good but yeah you can get these synthetics for very little uh, you know, less than 10 quid. Uh, I often come up and do hikes individually for the day and then shoot off, but walking this, it's really helped me to map them together in my head and see where everything is in relation to everything else. So yeah, it's really good for that, if you know the area. We're getting these with the water right ahead. A few birds knocking about. It is quite quiet today because well, it's wet. <laughs> been a good walk. It's funny because it's been, uh, you start off in the wilderness and then you've got the tops and the kind of roughness of that. Then you get down to the villages and it's a bit more sedate. So, definitely a mixed walk this one today for me. Berries on that rowan. Really red. They really stick out. <laughs> Absolutely loaded with berries. If you're doing this just as a walk around the lake, then there's little boardwalks on some of it, gravelly paths like behind me on some of it, so definitely a good walk around. It would naturally be quite marshy down here, so this is the boardwalk stuff you can see behind me. So we're going to come up to the jetties now, and the boats go around clockwise and anti-clockwise, and you can get on and off any of the jetties going around. Just coming out of the wood there, this is Brandlehow Bay. See a few boats on it there. And including the uh, ferry boat. So the ferry boat's just there. And I'll take you around the lake. And what a lake it is. I think the Cumbria Way, it really shows off the county and what it's got to offer. It's got the mountains on it, the lakes on it. I know there's no mad climbs or scrambles or anything like that on it, but it really shows you kind of there's lots for everybody around. So yeah, today I'm going to end up in Keswick, which is one of the bigger villages or towns, and we'll see what that's got to offer. There's a picture for you. Boat coming in to some people off. No doubt most of them going up Cat Bells. There's a little ferry heading off. That's High Brundle Howe Jetty and Low Brundle Howe Jetty is just a bit further down. There's the time, so pretty much every hour, and you go clockwise and anti-clockwise in two boats. The shore walk is pretty gentle, and you're right by the side of it, so nice and relaxing. started to see lat rig which is just there so beneath that is Keswick. As you come down this path you get to this bit and it says in trust celebrating 100 years of the National Trust caring for your countryside at Brandle Howe 2002. Right and you've also got this sculpture over here some nurturing hands. So when I was here the other week, I thought I'd actually recorded this for you, but I didn't. So here are the hands. There you go. 
bit of a sculpture for you. Okay, so they're pretty cool. Let's get ourselves through here. And you might recognize this from the Cat Bells video if you've seen that. But I'll put a link in for you. So that's Low Brundle How Jetty. If you've seen the Cat Bells video, we're going in the same direction. So we're going to head past the YHA in a minute. When we get to the youth hostel, we've done about half the length of the open water. It's the same again to the top, then across the top to Keswick. Gonna join the road in a sec. The youth hostel's just behind us here. Quite an imposing building. So when we're coming down here, that's the sign for the youth hostel. And I think that's Cat Bells. 10 minute walk up there, I'll take you there. But the more important thing is, if you are there, there's an ice cream van there. So if you get here and you need something, pop up for 10 minutes there and you'll be sorted. We are going through here. That didn't shut. No. Well, as shut as it can be. Right, we're out of the woods and into the open. Another bad one. Back in the woods for a little bit now. I'm going to pop out the top. On this sort of shore walk, it's not all a shore walk, there's a bit of false advertising that. Uh, some of it is in the woods, so I'm in the woods now. Not seen the lake for a good few minutes. And uh, it's dappled shade, so if it's a sunny day, get a bit of relief that way. And if it's a rainy day, get a bit of relief that way. So, you know. It's partly lake walk, partly wood walk. Both good though. <laughs> I don't know if you can read that or not, but it says, please do not feed the alpacas or llamas. Thank you. So there's a few in the field here. And they're uh, llama farmers. <laughs> Let's have a look then. So there they are. There's the alpacas and llamas. I'm not sure which is which. As I understand it though, I think the alpacas have got softer fur, so the fur is like really expensive. So if you've got a uh, wrap or shawl made out of that, you're doing pretty well. Ling home estate. Now we are carrying on straight up here. Keswick, two miles according to that. All right, so two miles to go. And we're going to meet up with Alison back there. Path splits off again, and there's the uh, lower path down there, which you do not want. We're taking the one on the left. If you take the lower path down there, that's going to take you to the water's edge again. But we're just heading straight to Keswick now. Heading down to meet the road now in Porting Scale, and then we'll go around the top towards Keswick. If you're enjoying the videos, then it really helps me out if you click on the like. Uh, and if you want to see more of these, then just click on subscribe and you'll see them as they come up. If you do that, like or subscribe or comment at all, that really helps me get the channel pushed out to more people on YouTube. It's only a teeny tiny channel at the moment. <laughs> and I want to show these videos as widely as possible. So if you do that, you're helping me to do it and helping keeping the channel open. All right, so down here, then around the top of the lake, and we can find the pub. This last bit, it is a road walk. Um, there's no other way to do it really because there's a couple of streams that run into don't water, so you've got to take the bridges going across. But this is the Cumbria Way, and we're going to do it as it's written. As we reach Don't Marina, that's the first look we get again at Don't Water. And I'm looking back there, it's the other end, you can see the church there, and that's at Grange. So one mile to go now from here, then we'll be there. This is our bridge over to the Keswick side. A little footbridge. It is a bit rickety, this bridge, <laughs> to be honest. It's a suspension bridge. So we've got a dot over there. Then they run up to Skiddle. That's our final run in. So that rig at the side. And Keswick dead ahead. That's us emerging into Keswick then. You see? All of a sudden busy as we re-enter civilization. Well, a bit of a track, but here we are. 
Keswick. There's the bridge, and there's the village as we're going in.